Let's start by talking about the documentary, Warts and All, a uh, four-hour documentary, Hillary, presently uh, being screened on Sky. It focuses, just for our viewers' benefit, on your presidential campaign and how it turned your life upside down. And I suppose I wanted to start by saying America has been turned on its head in the last few weeks with coronavirus and Black Lives Matter protests. So let's start with BLM, if I may. A um, big part of the 2016 uh, primary and presidential campaign. Um, and I was reading up before our chat, you said in one of the debates, um, unless there is a policy change, we'll be back here in 10 years time having the same conversation. Four years time, we're already here. Um, what policy needs to change? Well, I, I said that because during the 2016 campaign, from the very first speech that I gave until the you know final uh, votes were counted, I was stressing the importance of dealing with racial injustice, certainly in our policing system, uh, but in all of our institutions. Sadly, um, given what happened in that election and the kind of um, leadership we've had since then, it has taken a series of dreadful, uh, terrible killings uh, to awaken uh, the attention of the majority in our country about the need for real change. Something that you will have a view on is um, President Trump um, and his um, intolerance of some protesters, um, describing them as thugs, um, dishonouring the memory of George Floyd. Um, was he right on any level? No, and, and here's why. There should be no tolerance for uh, violent uh, protest. And certainly uh, that was not at the core of the literally millions of people who have come out to protest peacefully over the last several weeks. Uh, the protesters that uh, Trump tried to characterize as thugs um, were the ones he literally ordered our military to clear from the square in front of the White House. I wanted to ask you actually specifically about that and the fact that um, he used tear gas on the protesters. They were totally peaceful protesters. And what he was trying to do, as he often does, is to mischaracterize them and their uh, behavior and their goals and lump them in with the tiny, tiny minority of people who took advantage of a tragic moment uh, to loot and to steal and to vandalize, a tiny, tiny percentage. And he wanted to cast that over the millions of, you know, very thoughtful, nonviolent, peaceful protesters. For a photo opportunity. Well, the f absolutely, for a photo opportunity holding a book he's never read. He says that it's one of his favorite books. Yes, and he can't tell you a single thing that's in it. That uh, has been a uh, pattern. He's tried to uh, hijack uh, Christianity and the Bible in ways that are, you know, deeply hypocritical. Uh, and that was just another occasion. And the outcry by uh, religious leaders, I think, demonstrated uh, clearly that nobody was being fooled. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. You had a front row seat uh, to a lot of President Trump's uh, personality quirks during the 2016 campaign. Does he still surprise you four years on? Yes, yes, and, and here's why. Um, you know, obviously I tried to warn about uh, him when I was running against him, and yet once it was over, I hoped, along with many Americans, that he would rise to the job, that he would not be as bad as I feared in uh, the way that uh, uh, he, has, uh, beha he had behaved in the campaign. Sadly, he's been even worse. And the COVID-19 crisis really sums up uh, the, the deep uh, failures of his presidency. We will be today terminating our relationship with the World Health Organization and redirecting those funds to other worldwide and deserving urgent global public health needs. 
his refusal to uh, lead, to take any responsibility out of his own mouth, he says, I don't take any responsibility, to heed the warnings that were coming forward for quite some time before the cases exploded, to listen to the scientists, um, to reassure people, to lead by example, none of that. And then finally, he just got bored with it and he thought it was hurting him in his chances for reelection. So there hasn't been a task force meeting. Uh, he hasn't talked with the leading scientists uh, in a number of weeks. And he's gone back to trying to divert and deflect away from his failures uh, at that particular time in our, in our country uh, history. Clinton set to launch her second bid for the presidency. The goal is to get Hillary Clinton elected to be the 45th president of the United States. I provoked strong opinions, positive and negative. Hillary, take a hike! I mean, I one time said to somebody who asked me, what do you want on your gravestone? I said, she's neither as good nor as bad as some people say about her. <laughs> something that the uh, the documentary deals with the 2016 campaign as I said the polls had you as the runaway winner you lost why do you think you lost well I wrote a whole book about it Kay I wrote a book called what happened and I think there were a number of factors and obviously um, we were in a perfect storm the final straw was uh, what uh, the director of the FBI did in the last 10 days of the election uh, which was to revive the uh, you know, baseless uh, uh, accusations uh, that were then proven once again to be baseless, but it was a, a terrible setback to my campaign. And then Russia played a role and sure. WikiLeaks played a role. There, there were a lot of uh, factors. And I would just add this, um, what happened to me with, you know, the FBI director won't happen again, but Russian interference, manipulation of, uh, uh, social media, disinformation, that is all happening one more time. And it's going to have to be addressed uh, by the Biden campaign and I hope by the press to make sure that, you know, people aren't fooled again. Um, I saw you in an Upper East Side restaurant soon after the election um, and I wanted to come over and give you a hug because I can't begin to imagine how hard it was to walk back into the light after such a crushing defeat. How did you do it? Well, it was really hard. It was incredibly painful because I um, had expected to win. Um, that, that seemed to you know, be um, what everyone thought literally until it turned out I didn't. Um, but you know, I'm somebody who believes when you get knocked down, you get back up. We have to talk about Mon Monica Lewinsky. How did you uh, forgive your husband the pain. I would have thrown things at him until there was nothing left in the house to throw. Well, there, I'm not saying I didn't, am I? <laughs> it was incredibly hard and it took a lot of, um, you know, a lot of digging deep uh, about what I really wanted and what I could live with going forward. And at the end of it, we, you know, we had some counseling. We um, obviously spent an enormous amount of time once I began talking to him again, uh, talking it through. Um, I made the decision that I thought was right for me. And I am quick to say, I don't uh, in any way uh, suggest or judge any woman who makes a different decision. Let's talk about 2020. Uh, Joe Biden has vowed to pick a woman as his running mate. Um, any suggestions for him? I am thrilled about that. And obviously I think it's long overdue, but um, I, I talk to him periodically. I talk quite frequently to the leaders of his campaign. And I, I say, look, you've got three uh, important factors here. Number one, this person has to be ready to be president because we don't know what's gonna happen in this crazy world that we're living in right now. Number two, you've got to want to work with this person day in and day out and feel really good about the partnership. And then, of course, number three, this person has to help you win or at least do no harm. And you've ruled yourself out. I'm not even going to go there. Uh, what I am going to do just before I let you go is ask you about lockdown challenges, if I may, please, uh, Mrs. Clinton. <laughs> um, lockdown hair. I've not had my hair cut oh, for three months. Tell, I don't how, either. Tell me, how do you cope? <laughs> How do you go? I look like a sheepdog. <laughs> well, I think I'm part of your, I don't know, herd. <laughs>
And what about uh, dressing for Zoom chats? Do you dress like from here and you've got sweatpants on underneath? Yeah. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> Me too. Look. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I'm, I'm taking this dress shirt off as soon as we're finished. <laughs> uh, finally, before I let you go, who's going to win the election? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. How sure are you? Because you expected you to win and you didn't. Well, I, I am sure, but I'm going to work like crazy to make sure it does happen. Um, okay. There is no doubt in my mind that if the election were held Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, he would win. I just have to do everything I can so that it's also true the first Tuesday in November. Our country is desperately, uh, the world is desperately in need of a change in the American presidency. Okay, what's your final thought um, for President Trump if he was listening to you this afternoon? You know, just go away quietly. Thank you very much. <laughs> go back to golfing and whatever else you want to do. Just don't, uh, you know, continue to mess with our country. Thank you.